Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well today we're going to show you how to get your logo to span both the primary and secondary headers here. This is the secondary at the top, this is the primary on the bottom. So we're going to go from something like this, we're going to push our info over to this side on the secondary menu and have our logo sitting on the line. So it's going to look a bit like this going to give ourselves a bit more working room with the secondary menu up there so it's not too cramped. Now we've got to do a bit of CSS for this today, custom coding. Don't let that put you off. Any code I write I'll put down below and you're welcome to use it and manipulate it so it works with your site. So let's get started. I'm going to go to the theme customizer to do this. To get there I'm going to go down to dashboard, appearance, customize. That's going to bring us to this page right here. I'm going to go down to the additional CSS at the bottom. OK, once here we can write our custom CSS. The first thing I want to do is move all this information over to the right hand side here. So I'm going to right click and inspect it. I'm using Google Chrome with the great inspector tools. Most browsers have this nowadays, but if yours doesn't, Google Chrome is a free download. One I want is ET Info right there. As you can see when I hover over it, it's highlighting it, so we know we're on the right one. And that's a div ID. So first thing I want to do is we'll give it a bit of a title up here. It's always a good idea to give your custom code a title, especially if you write a lot of CSS like I do. It makes it a lot easier to find later on, and it's also a courtesy if anybody edits the site behind you. So we're going to say something that's going to make sense. OK, so I need that ET info. I just double left click on it to highlight it. I'm going to hit Control C to copy it. And because it's an ID, all IDs have to start with a hashtag. So I'm going to put hashtag and then the ID itself, ET info. Then I need to open and close some curly brackets inside there. We can write our code. And I want to push it over to the right hand side so I'm going to say float colon right as you can see that's now over the right hand side fantastic okay now we want to work on this logo and move it up the top or at least halfway up the top so again I'm going to inspect that and that's the actual logo itself and if we look over here it's got an ID of logo so we can do the same thing I don't need to copy it, I'll just write that in. Hashtag, because it's an ID, logo, the name. Open and close some curly brackets. And what do we want to do? We want it to go up by sort of 60 or 70 pixels. So we'll say margin top, margin dash top, colon, negative, try 60 pixels. I don't think that'll be quite enough. Not quite. As you can see, it's going up and it's also going underneath that secondary menu at the top there, which is what we don't want. But let's get it to where we want it. So I need a bit more. Let's try 90. That's about right. Maybe just a couple more. Say 94. There we go. Obviously, your logo is not going to be the same size as mine, so you need to change this number here, the negative number, to something that's going to fit your logo when it's up there. OK, I want to make this top header a bit bigger to accommodate it, else our logo is going to be kind of pushed up against the top there. So again, that's our ET info right there. I'm going to give it a bit of padding. So we need to put a semicolon. Wherever you write another line of code, you need to have a semicolon on the end of the one before. If you don't, it won't read the next line. So I'm going to say padding. And we can do top, bottom, left and right. So let's give it, say, 15 picks on the top. That's fine. It's actually because I put one entry and it's given 15 all round, but it's not quite in the middle there. We've got a bit more on the top than the bottom. So I'm going to put zero for left. And that will also work for right if I just leave the one entry in there. And I'm going to add a little bit more on the bottom. So I'm going to say 20 picks. 
That's more central, isn't it? Great. Okay. Well, let's work on this top header right here. Again, if I inspect, there we've got our top header. So let's copy that ID. And we'll go down a couple. ID, hashtag. Open and close some curly brackets. And what I want to do is put it behind our logo there. Now I happen to know that it's got a, if, if I click on it, or if we look down here, it's got a Z index or a forward position of 10,000. I want to take that down so we can see our logo. So for instance, if I click on this 10,000 and let's make it 9,000, there we go, our logo pops on top. So we can write in here, Z index 9,000, semicolon. Fantastic, and that's got everything about where we want it. So we need to hit publish to make this permanent. Now when we refresh this page, let's see what we've got. Great, well, that worked out well. Everything's exactly where we want it. So it's going to work fine for desktop. Let's have a look at it on tablet and on mobile. So again, with the great Chrome inspector, I'm going to hit the F12 to bring up the inspector. I'm going to hit the responsive toggle here. Here it is on an iPhone. Yep, yeah, that's not going to work on an iPhone. I want it back down to the regular place. Let's make this a bit bigger so you can see. I want the logo to be back where it normally is. I mean, just looks too cramped up there to me on that. Let's have a look on an iPad. No, I'm not sponsored by Apple. It just happens to be the things that they've got on here. Um, yeah, that's not too bad. We want to bring it down a bit again. Let's make it a bit bigger so you can see. We we'll probably just want to take the negative margin down a bit so it sits on that line a little bit better or the lines in the middle of it. So let's go ahead and do that. And to do that, we need to use what they call media queries. So let's take the responsive toggle off, get rid of the inspector. We'll go back to our customizer. And for sort of tablet size, I'm going to use 800 pixels is the mark that we want to change. So we're going to say at media. And remember, I'm going to put this down below as usual. So you don't need to copy it as I'm going along here unless you particularly want to only screen and now we need to open some round brackets and tell it the width of the screen we want to affect here so I'm going to say max dash width and for the iPad I'm going to say 800 pixels. again change this if it doesn't quite work for you this great thing about media queries you can set them to any sort of size width you want and put in as many as you want if you want to go crazy with it so I'm going to say 800 picks. Then after that, we, we need to open and close some curly brackets. And the actual code that we want. Well, here's our logo margin top right there. So I can just simply copy that, Control C, and we'll put it in there. That's the thing we want to adjust. And for the tablet, I'm going to take it down a little bit to, let's say, minus 80 picks. We'll try that. I think that's what I used before. And I'm also going to copy this, the whole thing, and I'm going to do one for the little iPhone. Paste that in there. This time I'm going to say max width 400 picks. And again, you change it to whatever you want. This should work for most little smartphones though. Logo zero. I want it to be in its normal position. So I want to put a zero in there and put a little summer semicolon there and there and there it's okay if it's only one line but if I add another line we want to make sure we've got one so it's good practice to put a semicolon on the end and we'll do one there too okay well let's publish this and see if that now works on tablet and mobile and we'll go over to our page and refresh okay there's our desktop version F12 to bring up the inspector, hit the little 
responsive toggle yeah that's pretty much spot on right there on the pad it's riding right on the line everything's fine you can read that fine you can get to the menu let's have a look on the iPhone get that a bit bigger so you can see yeah that looks a whole lot better right there you've got everything you've got the number the email logos right where you want it and you can get the menu there there we go that seems to have worked fine so that's how to get your logo to span both the primary and secondary menus on the Divi theme. Like I say, we've had to use a bit of CSS for this today, but I'll put this down below and you're welcome to use it how you wish. Just put in the values that you need because your logo is probably not going to be the same size as mine and use it how you wish. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell comment share and subscribe to the youtube channel once again this has been jamie from system 22 and webdesign and tech tips.com thanks for watching have a great day